In the last video, we saw that since 2018, I've increased my heart rate variability by 43%, from an average value of 47 milliseconds to current 68 milliseconds in 2024. Over that same time span, I've been able to reduce my resting heart rate from about 51 beats per minute in 2018 to the current average daily resting heart rate of 42 beats per minute in 2024, which is a 17% decrease. So in today's video, we'll take a look at what might be contributing to these improvements for these two measures since 2018. Now, the most obvious place to start would be physical activity or regular exercise training. And as a measure of that, I'm going to show data for the average daily heart rate or ADHR as an index of physical activity, of daily physical activity. And that data is provided by WHOOP. I'm not here to say that they're the best. That's what I've worn since 2018. More directly, we're going to take a look at the correlation for the next day resting heart rate versus the previous day's average daily heart rate. And this is exactly four days of four years of data from March of 2020 through March of 2024, almost 1,500 days of data. In other words, what's the correlation for the average daily heart rate with the next day resting heart rate? And that's what, that's what we can see here. And there is a significant positive correlation between these two variables with a correlation coefficient of 0.72. And you can see that that p-value is far below 0.05. In other words, this data suggests that too much daily activity and too often will be bad for the resting heart rate. What about heart rate variability? So over that same four year period, almost 1500 days of data, we pull up the data here. And now there's a significant inverse correlation between the previous day's average daily heart rate with the next day heart rate variability. As we can see, the correlation coefficient is negative. In other words, too much daily activity and too often will be bad for the heart rate variability. So if, if I don't allow for enough recovery in between workouts, that will lead to chronically lower heart rate variability and chronically higher resting heart rates. And if you saw the last video, and if you missed it, I'll put it in the right corner, we saw that a relatively high heart rate variability in conjunction with a low resting heart rate would be what we'd expect to find as youthful data. So together from these two plots, we can see that a chronically higher average daily heart rate is significantly correlated with a worse heart rate variability and uh, heart, uh, resting heart rate. So as I mentioned, finding the balance between active and rest days is important for optimizing these two variables. So what does that look like? And just as a simple uh, overview of what that looks like, this is one week of quote unquote training in my data. So starting with an active day, that would be uh, an, uh, an average daily heart rate as shown here of 58 beats per minute. I then purposefully titrate activity lower on the next two or three days. In this case, it's two days. So you can see it was 56 and 52 beats per minute, which allows for resting heart rate and heart rate uh, variability recovery, such that I then do another workout on, on, as we can see, that was a 57 beats per minute. And my workouts are 90 minute full body. It's a mix of strength training, calisthenics, stretching, mobility, et cetera. It's basically one long circuit workout. And it takes at least two days based on heart rate variability and resting heart rate um, to, to recover, uh, for them to recover. And then after that second active day, we can see that I purposefully titrate activity lower for at least two days after that, 56 and 54 beats per minute as shown there. Now, physical activity isn't the only variable that may be impacting these cardiovascular fitness metrics. So what's the relationship for body weight with resting heart rate? So for that, we're going to take a look at the average monthly body weight since I started tracking uh, these fitness me uh, measures, the heart rate variability and resting heart rate from August of 2018 through March of 2024. And note that body weight, I've been recording that every morning going back to 2015 after using the bathroom and fasted. And we can see the average monthly body weight shown there. Now, we'll also pull up the average monthly heart, uh, resting heart rate during that same time period as shown there. And just looking at the two plots, we can see that there seems to be some overlap. During periods where I've reduced body weight, resting heart rate has also declined. Conversely, during periods where I gained body weight, the resting heart rate has also increased. But these are just gross, gross uh, observations. You know, is there a direct correlation for body weight with resting heart rate? So for that, we're going to take a look at correlations for the daily resting heart rate, individual data points versus body weight. And this is from August of 2018 through the end of March 2024, almost 2,100 days of data. 
And here we can see that there is a significant positive correlation between the resting heart rate with body weight with a correlation coefficient of 0.7 and a p-value that's very far below a, a significance threshold of 0.05. In other words, as body weight increases, that's significantly correlated with higher resting heart rates in my data. Maybe that's not true for others. And on the other side, conversely, as body weight has approached 139 pounds, which is pretty close to where I am currently, the resting heart rate has approached 40 beats per minute. All right, what about heart rate variability? How does body weight relate to that? So now we're going to take a look at the average monthly heart rate variability over that same time span, August of 2018 through March of 2024. And here, just gross observation, it, the plots don't look as, as similar as body weight to resting heart rate, but there are some trends. During periods where body weight was reduced, heart rate variability increased. Now that was early on and it's not, you know, it doesn't look like a, a, a perfect uh, overlap, right? So s during the most recent three year period where I've consistently reduced body weight over that time, we can see that heart rate var variability has consistently increased. Conversely, during a period where body weight increased, heart rate variability decreased. All right, so this is the, just a gross observation. What about the direct correlation? And this is over that same about 2100 day time span, which is what we'll see here. And in terms of the correlation, we can see that there is a significant inverse correlation for body weight with heart rate variability. In other words, as body weight has increased, that's significantly correlated with a lower uh, heart rate variability. And as body weight has been reduced, heart rate variability has approached relatively youthful values or closer to youthful values, 68 milliseconds. So to address the question, what's the relationship for body weight with resting heart rate and heart rate variability, from these data, at least in my data, I don't know if this is true for others, we can see that resting heart rate and heart rate variability approach youthful values as body weight decreases. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon, where I post day-to-day -day data for re a resting heart rate, heart rate variability, and a whole bunch of other stuff. We've also got dis discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic and telomere testing, NED quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes ApoB, but also now GrimAge, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.